Hey guys, today we are going to test how effective masks are at protecting our respiratory organs. To do this, we went to pharmacies, stores, called sellers of protective equipment, and got eight different masks and a respirator, including this mask we sewed with our own hands from eight layers of gauze, and we'll test it together with the others. Three masks for protection against dust are equipped with a non-return valve. By the way, such a valve is very useful. When you wear a mask, bacteria multiply very quickly, but we will talk about that later. The valve allows these bacteria to be exhaled to the outside. We will also have two medical masks, one blue and one white. One mask with a plastic spider inside, and another mask from a world-famous brand of protective equipment. Most of the masks have a rigid frame that follows the shape of the nose, and some even have a soft material in this place. Let's see how it helps in the test. This is just my subjective opinion, but I personally don't like the idea of wearing masks during a pandemic. You know what you're going to eat if you don't open your mouth long enough. Of course you do. You wake up every morning and you know. If you don't exhale, bacteria and germs will multiply very quickly in a dark, warm, and humid environment. Good thing we breathe through our noses when we sleep, not through our mouths. And when we breathe through the mouth, it dries out quickly. It's different when you wear a mask. Here, in addition to favorable conditions for reproduction, you also inhale everything that multiplies so quickly. For this reason, it is not recommended that children cover their mouths with a scarf in the winter. Even if you read the THO recommendations again, there is a lot written about infection through the mucous membranes, including the eyes, and a lot of clever words. From what I read, I realized that the mask hardly protects. It is recommended only for a sick person so as not to infect healthy people. It is better to wash your hands thoroughly and with clean hands click subscribe to our channel. We thought long and hard about how to test the effectiveness of the masks. So we decided to put the smoke from 10 cigarettes through each one. And in the end, we're going to pick one and see what happens to the mask when 100 cigarettes of smoke go through it at once. We'll have Talapatot as our test subject. His lungs will be replaced by absorbent cotton and he'll breathe with a vacuum cleaner. And the whole experiment will take place in a glass flask. We'll make a hole in the mannequin's nose and mouth. Another hole in the board for the vacuum hose. And to prevent the lungs from being sucked into the vacuum cleaner, we use a strainer. The tube is tightly fitted to the spherical shape and all the smoke that leaks through the mask will pass through the absorbent cotton. All the excess hole is sealed on the outside with glue. And for more objectivity of the experiment, we will add silicone inside. Also, when testing each mask, we will fix the head with glue so that the air will only go through the nose and mouth of the dummy. Put on the first mask, fix the nose, light the cigarettes. We cover the lab setup with a glass dome and we all wait for the result. With the vacuum cleaner on, cigarettes smolder in literally five minutes. The mask has lost much of its original whiteness, quite a bit of yellowing inside and out. And that's just 10 cigarettes. I think smokers should think twice. What's in the lungs? Obviously the respirator couldn't contain all the smoke. Although it's too early to draw any conclusions, we're going to test all the masks. And right now we're going to do the same experiment without the mask. Then we will have enough information to make a comparative analysis and say how protective the masks are. Now let's simulate pandemic situation number two. Only now a protective mask will not be enough to be in a public place. You'll need a special hazmat suit. Meanwhile, we continue our test. While we were still experimenting, we identified a number of masks. One was very close to the face. There were no gaps, not near the nose, not on the cheekbones, not on the chin. And even during a smoke break, the mask was pulled down over the face. 
Others, on the other hand, left room for air to pass around the mask. In the end, we'll see if this affects the results or not. And here it is, the last mask to be tested. Poor Tolapatoda has tar running down his nose and lips. It's not a pretty sight, to say the least. The experiment left a pile of ashes. By the way, for some reason, two petri dishes even burst. We laid out the masks from the cleanest to the dirtiest absorbent cotton. Now let's see what we have. According to our opinion and visual comparison, the ordinary blue medical mask did the best job. On it, of course, there were traces in the form of whiskers on the place where the maximum flow of smoke came from. In second place, strangely enough, is a homemade bandage made of eight layers of gauze. It also has pronounced whiskers on both sides and relatively clean, absorbent cotton lungs. The mask with the orange flap showed a very decent result. Of course, it is very yellowed on the outside, very dirty inside, and that's only 10 cigarettes. The fourth mask is also tarred on both sides. The first four masks show similar results when you look at the absorbent cotton. Next on the list are competitive outsiders. The best of the worst was the mask that fit the face as tightly as possible. But it did not live up to expectations. If you compare the mask with the black and orange valve, you can even see visually which one protects better. And the absorbent cotton only confirms the effectiveness of each mask. But the result is even worse for the white medical mask. And here comes the outsider of the hit parade. Sesame opened and the smoke came out. Look at the absorbent cotton through which the smoke of 10 cigarettes has passed without any mask. You can see that even the worst mask gives you a much better result than if you don't use any protection at all. And now, as promised, let's choose one of the eight masks and see what happens when we pass the smoke of 100 cigarettes through it. Which one to choose? Let's go with this one. 100 cigarettes or talapatat in a mask. Let's see what happens to the mask. Towards the end of the smoldering, even a powerful one and a half kilowatt lung can't handle that much cigarette smoke. The picture is frightening. I suggest that all smokers look at it and think about it. So the absorbent cotton is covered in tar, but that's nothing compared to the mask. Not only is it dirty, it stinks, and it's disgusting to look at. I'm not even talking about Talapatat. He's covered in resins. You can't see it on camera, but guys, believe me, the mask is really wet and sticky. It's really wet. It's wet and it stinks. Don't be a stinker. Subscribe for live today. That's all for today. Bye-bye.